Everybody, how you doing? It's Ollie Bilson here, and I am with Mr. Tom Breeze. Hey guys, how you doing? It's good. It's like a film star introduction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm I'm super pumped and excited. Pumped is very American, by the way. I've been stoked. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a stoked. Yeah, yeah that's, an that's an Australian. Um, so um, I am super excited. Um, <laughs> um, to uh, talk about uh, today's topic um, in regards to how you as an agency go about um, really putting together some of the, the best, probably world-class campaigns for um, lots of business owners and, and other marketers uh, that are getting real-world results right now. And the thing that's always fascinated me about this is, is that you've actually put together a kind of a framework, a methodology, if you want, um, which enables somebody to actually, um, probably on the back of this conversation, go go away and actually take some action, which is what this is all about, really. Um, and also probably to help you explain that to potential clients exactly what happens, because um, it's kind of like black magic to me, this whole YouTube thing is, even now, even knowing the, the great results you're getting for lots of people. Um, so... Let's kick off a little bit. I mean, I've got a bit of an insider's look on um, um, what you're actually doing and the results you're getting, which are pretty amazing. Um, but for, for everybody listening, kind of just kind of start at the beginning, really. Um, in fact, just for some context to people, I think before we dive into the framework and methodology, um, let's talk a little bit about the state of YouTube advertising as it is right now as of recording this, this, um, this podcast. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, there's a while ago, probably a couple of years ago when I first started getting, uh, started with YouTube ads and that was like really in the early days and no one really knew what they were doing. It was almost like a separate part of AdWords as well. So it was very much felt like you had the YouTube side of things and then it's like the AdWords is a completely different ball game altogether. And they very much merged now. Um, in the early days it was like dirt cheap, dirt cheap. It was like cents per view, uh, or even one cent per view, and that would be like, you can scale up massively on that because just, there was no competition because it works off that, um, the, the bidding walls basically. So who's prepared to pay more to appear in front of different videos, et cetera, um, or at the top of the search results um, on, on YouTube. But um, there's, there's kind of several layers to the depth of where you want to go with, with uh, YouTube advertising because you've got the one layer which is like, right, let's just get started. Let's show some pre-roll ads on YouTube, for example. Um, and get my ads up there and it's difficult to get that started because you've got to create a video you've got to learn how to promote it and get it out there and things um, but it's really really effective if you kind of learn it or you get someone else to do it for you you should be able to get some really really good results um, if you know how to create the video properly which we've talked about already in the podcasts um, and um, also if you're able to target your audience correctly as well I mean you've got to bear in mind that on YouTube people are in search modes they're looking for information and if your audience are doing that great you can get in front of them if your audience aren't doing that or it's not quite right then it's a bit more difficult to get in front of your audience um so there's a we'll talk about that in a moment actually because that's part of the framework that we talk about um but the the beauty is is that there's that layer which i often talk about in podcasts and talk about with like um people that are new to youtube for example but there's a there's another layer which is gets really interesting exciting still not that complex really in terms of the conceptual side of things but more a case of like wow it does that as well uh, which is where you're starting to look at things like your remarketing efforts your um, building similar audiences which are very much like look-alike audiences on facebook but work in a slightly different way that have now become really exciting by the way a few months ago it was difficult to get results of those audiences now it's a lot easier um, and then you've also got like right most people will think of youtube as like a video ad showing inside of YouTube. So you have to be on youtube.com to see those ads, which isn't the case. You can get your ads appearing um, not only in front of other video, like YouTube videos and other websites, which is pretty cool. So if you like someone's embedded a YouTube video, you can get your uh, pre-roll ad in front of that, which is pretty cool um, and very cost effective um, in terms of getting a view. Um, not always to say that the targeting has to be looked at because there's to be kind of quite specific on that front. But also you can get, which is, kind of crazy but you can get videos actually appearing in the ad section so you know if you've got sometimes look at like a blog for example and they've got like a square box 
where an ad would normally appear, like a normally a, a text ad or an image ad, you can actually show a video ad there as well. Um, it's not very well known to be able to do that, but you can imagine like it's, it's um, done very much like a newsfeed video ad on Facebook where the, uh, it's like autoplay and silent, so it works in a very similar way. And if someone clicks to play that video, it actually takes you back to the website, which is just super powerful. Um, so it's almost like having display banners across the internet, but they're actually just your videos. And it doesn't have to be a YouTube video. You can actually upload your own MP4 video if you, if you want to as well. So it's just some really clever stuff that's happening uh, with YouTube and video and AdWords that not many people are tapping into. But um, yeah, it's really, really cool. But there's, there's looking layers of how far you go with this and, and kind of like a, and the really exciting stuff around that. But I want to kind of talk today about a bit of a framework in terms of how to get into advertising because I think that a lot of people look at advertising as like, right, how do I create an ad and how do I get in front of my audience? But very rarely do they look at the third thing, which is the funnel and making sure you're maximizing the value of each customer because um, then you can maximize, maximize the value of each lead. And if you know you're prepared to pay more than your competitor for a lead, then you can normally clear up, like you can like just mop up the market, saturate the market and know you're, you're making good money there and you can be the only player. So that's kind of what I want to talk about is like the five moments of truth, we call it. And um, it comes from a lot of advertising um, from years gone by, but it's kind of modernized a lot more now with the online world. So we'll, we'll jump into that if that's all right with you, mate. Yeah, I love it. Um, I love it. And I think the fact that, you know, I think that for everybody listening to this, that perhaps, you know, may have thought that YouTube might not mature as a advertising platform that they could also leverage. Is there a notion with it where, you know, YouTube advertising could pretty much work for any business, virtually any business, would you say? I'd always say, I'd always hesitate to say any business. It's a, it's a difficult one to say any business. The, if people are, if people are naturally going to YouTube and searching, great. Like, yes, it will definitely, and searching for what you potentially offer, of course, <laughs> then you can get in front of that audience and you should be able to turn them to customers. The, the, uh, also another thing to consider is that fact that people might not be searching for exactly what you offer, but if you're clever about it, you can, um, bring that traffic through to get to know, like, and trust you and want to buy the products you actually sell as well. So like, for example, we've got one client, um, who works in the guns kind of industry, um, in America. And, um, obviously we can't sell guns straight off of YouTube. It doesn't <laughs> certain levels of what you can advertise. Um, but there's no stopping you from advertising holsters, for example, or target practice or, the oil that goes with it. And if you wanted to go slightly outside of that ballpark as well, you could even move into the survival market, for example. So um, if people are looking for, um, which is a lot of people in, in the States think that the world's going to end and fair enough to them. And they want to kind of like get their houses packed full of all the stuff they need. Um, then people are looking that stuff up all the time and spend a fortune doing it. And it is the sort of thing where you can um, kind of tap into that sort of market that you know would also be interested in actually what you sell. So it's a, it's a case of being a little bit clever sometimes, but then there's, I mean, so for example, I got an opportunity not too long ago to buy a business that was a, um, they do like coving in houses. So like in the top corner of your house, instead of having like a 90 degrees between the roof and the wall, you can put some nice, really nice coving there. Yeah, do you know what? If I really thought about it, I might be able to get YouTube to work, but <laughs> I'm not sure how that would, how yeah. successful that would be. So, so but that's probably more down to the business model. Yeah. It, um, and I, I have like, I, the reason why I asked the question is there's some, you know, there's a resistance sometimes with business owners to try new things. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is now, you know, marketing is so much, it's so data driven um, that, you know, you could quickly put an ad up. Uh, you can quickly know uh, within a reasonable time frame whether or not that that ad is going to be generating any leads supposing they've got you know they're using some kind of lead capture mechanism you know there's the still uh, there is a resistance of you know my business is different when really you know your business the, the mechanisms that go towards you know putting together a, a you know a, 
a sales pipeline or a list of you know a list of people that may be interested or put their hand up. You know, it's the same thing. We're just using it on a different platform, and I think there mm. are so many opportunities. Really, again, it's not a blanket approach. I'm sure there may be some things that are slightly uh, difficult uh, to advertise with with YouTube. Uh, but having said that, um, there are so many related things that have synergy uh, that uh, that you can position yourself next to to, to other uh, associated products or services that might get you some traction. And and so before we kind of just dive into the methodology, really for me it was more of a um, just a just a, a kind of to acknowledge that you know if you're listening to this and thinking you know this is about youtube um maybe this isn't you know for me um factually you can try things you can test things affordably and quickly that may just make the difference for you um and i know right now you are uh, channeling a lot of resources and energy towards these strategies um, that um that are really getting great results. It would be stupid for anybody not to, you know, pay close attention really to these uh, five moments of truth that we're going to go through. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is moment of truth number one? I've had a few moments of truth, just absolutely nothing to do with marketing. <laughs> um, so um, let's, uh, let, let's get on with truth number one. Okay, cool. So um, this works in a linear fashion as well. So like if you're a business listening into this, um, this is like step one, step two, step three. It's not a case of just five random moments. It's, they can all be taken in isolation and used differently. But the first one let's talk about is before anyone knows about who you are or your brand, like super cold traffic, like no one really knows who, they've never seen you before, never seen your logo or what you do, and it's com completely new. Um, at that point, you're going to want to have to spark them into wanting to find out a little bit more, which is not easy, right? So... This will always depend on the platform you're on. So say, for example, you're advertising on Facebook. Of course, you can start to segment your audience slightly in terms of demographics, locations, their interests. So you can kind of get a feeling that they're going to be right for you. Um, and you can say, right, if they're interested in that, they're probably going to be interested in my stuff, but they haven't ever seen you before. So you still need to do a bit of a, you're getting in front of them where they might be on their mobile, waiting in a line at the shopping center or whatever it is and they will kind of see your ad, for example, or see your post, for example, and, and it's got to grab their attention in order for them to be interested in what you have to offer. And if you're the advertiser and you're trying to get in front of someone at that point, then you really need to think about what's your hook, what's your kind of like, what's going to grab their attention very quickly so that um, they actually want to find out more. And I, I often use a phrase that was like, did you know, um, as a starting point of the video, because it's a great way. It's just like engaging them in a question, which is different to usual. So it kind of works as a bit of a pattern interrupt, but also it's like, you can't not look at the next sentence. If someone says, did you know? And then if, if the question is again, really engaging, you're going to be hooking them into what you have to talk about. So that's normally a good way to start, but kind of like creating the moment of, of stimulus in somebody is, is not an easy job. And that's why advertisers get paid a lot of money to do that. Um, especially the creative ones as well. But the, um, sometimes that moment happens, without you having to create it in somebody. So um, when I found out we were pregnant, or my wife, when I found out my, my wife was pregnant for the second time, it was a bit um, earlier than we were expecting, put it that way. No surprise, didn't they call it? <laughs> and um, uh, at that time, we had a, a six-month-year-old, and we were like, wow, okay, blimey, this is, this is quick work sort of thing. And immediately we're in the market for random, well, not random things, but things like a double buggy, like we'd never thought of buying a double buggy before and a new car and even a new house I was thinking of as well at the time. Uh, we just did some renovations to our house, but again, in the market for renovations. Um, so external factors can spark you into this moment of stimulus because all of a sudden you're like, wow, I, I'm, I'm now going to start paying attention to certain things that can potentially kind of like give me the answers to my questions, et cetera. So there's that moment of stimulus. It either happens externally to us, and so therefore we got kind of get put on the path to purchase, as, uh, as we always would. Um, or we, as advertisers, will try and be that kind of that billboard on the side of the road or that magazine ad in the golf monthly, for example, where you know your, your audience are interested in golf, but you've still got to spark that interest. You've still got to create that moment of stimulus in them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, sure. That makes a lot of sense. So really, it's 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 really that first phase of attraction, um, and 
um, being attracted more more importantly to to something either with some level of intent because as you mentioned there may be some external factors that might be uh, bringing that to the boil or it might be that interruption that 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 creates some degree of curiosity um, or stimulus towards taking the next step yeah precisely and that's why um, I think video works so well, typically in these scenarios, is because you can almost start a story. Like a, qu a question does well, and um, starting a story like a case study can be a bit of a catch-all. So people are like, wow, they've got leads or they've got customers. How do they do that? I want to kind of copy that. But if you've kind of got a video, you can kind of explain that. If you've got a limited amount of text or an image, for example, you're going to have less to really sure. kind of grab the attention. Um, so video can work really well in that, um, in that way. Unless you've got some like dynamite copywriter, that's amazing. Do that as well. Yeah, sure. I actually really like this um, because, you know, when you look at things in this kind of linear fashion, I think it's quite easy to understand. So, we, OK, so we um, stimulus. Uh, where do we go from there? OK, so once the stimulus has been created, either by your efforts as an advertiser or by just external um, environmental factors on the kind of like on the customer, then um, they'll move into the customer will move into a moment of intent, which is where. Uh, at that point, once the moment has happened, that moment of stimulus has happened, if it's enough to spark their interest, they're going to go on, on a bit of a, like a research moment. And it's that moment of intent. They're, they're, in, they're motivated themselves. They're like, okay, cool. I've, I want to find out more. I want to come get some answers um, to my questions. And that moment of intent is really where YouTube works so well um, because it's, it's search traffic. Like if we are, let's put myself in back in those shoes of like realizing we need to go shopping for a double buggy. Uh, which I've never done before, and they don't really sell them in shops that often um, because it's just not that desirable because you, very rarely do you have like, really young kids unless they're twins, but we still couldn't have that because we have one kid that's older than the other. <laughs> it's all crazy. Um, so I was in, in the market for a very specific type of buggy, and I had to do online research. I had to go to Google. Had to go to, I didn't have to go to YouTube, but I ended up there because I wanted to see the demonstrations of some of these products and see exactly how they work because um, making sure I can put the buggy in the back of the car and actually collapse the damn thing because that's probably the most difficult thing to do in the world. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so it's kind of like those uh, kind of like questions in your head, you want to kind of get the answers to them. You might want to go and review sites like Amazon and see the product and see what other people are talking about and see what's happening there. And so you're kind of gathering your information at that point and um, if at that moment in te of intent, if you're able to get in front of your customer at that point when they're searching for you, the great thing is you don't have to then bring about the moment of stimulus because it's already happened. So you're basically, your job really is to be that really helpful salesperson in a store, for example. You're not having to really push the sale because they've come into the store for that specific reason. Yeah. So basically you're saying, okay, look, what are you in the market for? How can I help you? And maybe give some good advice to then close the deal. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the adverts that we create on YouTube. It's not this big hyped up, hey, look how good we are. It's more a case of like, we know what you're searching for and here's three tips that can really help you. Um, and you provide that really good value and so you can have that good call to action in the video that just makes sense to people. It doesn't feel like they're being sold. It means that they can actually be empowered to buy, which is a very different feel. Yeah, sure. And, and just in case anybody who's listening that's been living under, the rock, under a rock for God knows how long, uh, YouTube's like the second largest search platform on the internet, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's officially the second largest search engine. Um, the, the question I would ask of that, though, is that um, the great thing you have with YouTube is that there's like on Google, for example, which is the number one, if you're going to pay to be there, it's a lot more expensive because for a particular keyword, there's only one page that comes up for that, right? Um, for a particular keyword or topic, on YouTube, there's hundreds of thousands of videos that people want to watch. Um, and they want to watch more than just one. So you get all this opportunity to get in front of those people yeah. with different types of ads on YouTube. But also, those videos um, are all over the internet as well. So they're being embedded in different websites and you can get in front of people there as well. So your videos really can- It's got the reach. Yeah. yeah the, the, and, and also it's like, it's the, um, the, like, if you look at like supply versus demand, the supply is massively outweighing the demand because no one's really getting into it. And so you've got all this huge opportunity and that's going to take a long time for people to um, increase the demand because more people are creating videos every day than there are people advertising. So we're getting more and more supply all the time as well, which is just awesome. crazy. It's cool. Um, cool. So intent, the stimulus intent. Um, yeah. Let's move on to number three. 
So this is moment of decision, um, I call it. Um, it can often be called the moment of purchase as well. And this is the point, this is like um, that moment where someone has to make a decision straight away. Now, this is where a lot of the work that you've done before in like, the, like say for example, you've been running ads um, and you've been getting in front of people with that moment of stimulus, trying to create these like really clever videos, for example, or however you've done it, that can play, play a role in this position here. So like this moment of decision really is like, are you gonna buy or not? Or are you gonna buy this brand or that brand? And it's kind of like, so it's different scenarios. So like, say for, let's say for example, you're in the shopping mall and you look at the, the um, or shopping, uh, what do you call it, uh, supermarket, um, and you're there and you're looking in the frozen aisle section for peas. Um, it's almost like what brand of peas do you decide to buy? And it's not gonna be based on price very much now. It's probably gonna be based on like what adverts you've seen, what brand you've recognized and go and make a decision from there. It might be some sort of deal for sure that, that you might go for. Um, and also you might go for organic versus um, non-organic or <laughs> genetically modified. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, non-organic. <laughs> it relates to food with you. We've had, if you're in the mall, if you're in the supermarket, it's all about food. <laughs> I mean, it's good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone can relate. Really hungry after this. All bases, American, English, everything. Yeah, <laughs> good. Jeez. Everyone's um, by peace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Frozen the, ones as well. So, so let's say, for example, you buy a TV. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, it's, 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 it's that. For the TV, it's that moment you go into the shop and you talk to the salesperson, and also you see the TV, how it's displayed. Is it? Um, like front and center, do you, do you see it's being like put there? Anything? Yeah, that's the one for me. Do you really want it? And there's so many things that are happening in that moment. Online, it's probably going to be more like the sales page, what you can see, what the deal is, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Or, but this, when it says moment of decision, I call it moment of decision because it might not be for something um, kind of a, a commercial exchange just yet. It might be like a free exchange for an email, uh, which is still an exchange. It's still commercial exchange to a certain extent because you're passing across your email details in order to get more information. Um, but um, it's that moment of decision where someone's going to say, am I going to do this or not? Am I going to take you up on the offer or not? Um, and then that kind of, this moment carries on for quite some time because based on that experience and the no like and trust factor, if you're nurturing that relationship, it continues to come around again. Are they going to buy from you like a higher priced item? Are they going to like continue to buy from you as well? Um, okay, cool. So we, we've talked about stimulus, we've talked about intent, and we've got to decision. Now, the thing that uh, probably is the conversation that's going on in other people's minds while they're listening to this is, is there then, um, uh, just to, to, to clear up what might be obvious but might not be obvious to some, is that there are different ads that run at each of these stages that people are at for example so is there that the moment of decision are we talking about we know that they're warm traffic because they've been to us before possibly there's remarketing going on there or possibly we're we're we're, we're approaching that market because we already know that they've got intent they're specifically looking for something in which case that nature of advert in regards to the decision is already there to get them to the step to get an opt-in to lead generate or to get to make, make push them towards a purchase. Is that right? Yeah, so, so ideally what you'd have is for every moment of intent that someone's in, based on what that intent is, you'd almost have a funnel that would correlate to that. So you would say, right, if you are interested in, let's say, um, building a website, then you would offer a funnel of like, here's how to build a website. Um, or if you're interested in SEO, you'd be like, here's how to get the SEO right for your website. You might end up buying the same or selling the same product later on. You'd have these little funnels that would correlate to that. Yeah, Some and essentially it's a ladder really that you're imagining um, your uh, potential prospect is, is, is which step they are on um, yep. in regards to what ad um, you're going to position towards them. Yeah, exactly. So something I talk about um, every now and again is like the idea of like an osteopath, for example, if someone's in a moment of like, because they've got a, a bad back, and they're wanting to look up exercises on or find out how to like deal with their lower back pain, you might on YouTube, give them a good um, video about how to deal with lower back pain, and then kind of sell them straight away into the osteopath. It's like a um, clinic, for example, go straight that route. Um, but then you might be a bit clever and think, right, well, 
Um, those people are on, you, on YouTube that are looking up something like marathon training plans. Um, you might say, well, that's not necessarily something you would necessarily advertise straight off. But if they're in a local area and they are um, looking up marathon training plans, as an osteopath, you could probably say to them, this is kind of moving back to the moment of um, stimulus. You can almost like run an ad to that audience and say, hey, look, if you're running a marathon this year, um, have a think about um, the lower back pain because that's normally one of the biggest injuries that people get because they haven't got their spine aligned and we can do a session for you sort of thing. So you'll have different moments for sure and you want to kind of follow up with those people in different ways because someone who's looking at marathon training plans probably needs a little bit more nurturing before they come to your session whereas if someone's got back pain and they actually are desperate to see you, straight away phone call, that would probably be an easy way to close them. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just, it's what I always imagine is imagine the online world becomes an offline world and you're sitting down one-to-one -one with that person. And what would you naturally say to them? Like, how would you come across and what would you need to do in order for them to come to a session with you? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So let's um, just move this forward now from the moment of decision and mm -hmm. an ultimate. Uh, what does that look like? Okay, so moment number four is the um, moment of reflection. And that's the point in which they've taken action with you. They've either signed up for free or they've um, bought your first product or they've bought one of your bigger products, for example, um, whatever it is that they've done. Um, and at that point, they're going to really review uh, whether they thought that was a good purchase or not. So let's say, for example, you buy the TV, you get it home. Um, this day and age, you would hang it on the wall. And once it's there, you're going to look at it and you're going to play around with the remote and try and get it to work. And in that first experience of that product, you're going to be, it's like that first impression of that product. It's like whilst you've seen what it looks like and you're really impressed by it, then how the actual functionality works is another thing. And you're making up your mind of whether you like that product or not very quickly. And that's why Apple spend a fortune when you buy like an iPhone from them. It takes ages to open the products because they've got almost like it's vacuum sealed. You can't get it out for ages, but it builds the anticipation. And then when you open it up, it just looks really sleek looks really good. There's no digging around to find where the product is. It just looks all good. All the gubbins and all of that, the wires and stuff are at the bottom, tied up nicely and stuff. Um, it's not done in a plastic bag, put it that way. <laughs> it's done in a really nice way. Um, in fact, kudos to you. Um, I know that you send out some amazing, um, um, what do you call them, uh, packs? The, um, yeah, the shock, and all, shock and all packs. Yeah, They're unbelievable. Um, so yeah, when you like I, I know just everybody is just listening and um, Ollie sent me a shock and all pack and I literally was shocked and all it's I still haven't and this is like a marketing piece right so came to the post it's still here it's still next to me <laughs> so it, like it's just like the branding is constantly there in front of my face and it's just it's just like it's like a pattern interrupt in itself because it's just so cool um and uh and I think that's one of the first times we actually got to know each other isn't it yeah, so, yeah. It's so cool. So it obviously works really well. Um, <laughs> that, but that kind of like first engagement was such that I felt, wow, I, like by just knowing you is a really good decision that I made. In the, in the, not that I and made it decision. Yeah. And it, I did, totally was. There was no buyer's remorse. Once I got you over the free line, I mean, we, you know, this relationship is going along quite yeah. well. We'll be married next year. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Yeah, you will be pregnant. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll work it away. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, now that's that that that, that that's interesting because um, I think that 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 what what some people um, may need to see a, this perspective on is, you know, there needs to be re you need to reaffirm people's buying decisions sometimes. And I don't know about anybody listening to this or maybe you, but sometimes when you've researched something for ages and then you go and finally buy it, sometimes when you get it back, then you actually want to go and find out again if it's still the best thing or like what those functions are that that, that it said that it did or was the hidden functions you know could you know in, in, in an iphone term now could i jailbreak this you know i'm going to go on youtube and search for how do i jailbreak my brand new iphone whatever it might be and, and you want confirmation of um th that being the right decision i mean that in itself is a is a, is a whole different conversation um but um you know certainly um the the consumption as well of that because you know people buy stuff all of the time um and they get brought into marketing messages and, and they they buy stuff um and then you know they never get the the wrapping off the thing so, mm. so you can use use this and think about this for for 
for those purposes of trying to get people to actually consume what it is that you're trying to get them to to to, to do at each of these different stages and, and this being the stage where you'd really do that yeah as I, I completely agree and i think that um a lot of the time people feel like wow we've got the perfect product but then people don't go and use it and, and in fact that's something where i really struggle with with some of the products that i've created because i know that youtube's not easy and if you look at it from the standpoint of like, right, I'm going to get into it and you go and buy my products, for example, um, I've done it in the most kind of step-by-step -step way and try and make it as easy as possible to go through. But you need to be motivated. I can't make a product that makes you motivated. Um, it's just not my necessary style. I'm going to be constantly selling people like, and this is why this is so great. And yeah. you're going to love this bit. It's <laughs> just not my style. It's like, this works right. Go and do it. It's going to be amazing for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that a lot of time and energy in actually getting people to consume the product is so important because so many marketers these days, um, and I was on a mastermind call not, the, not long ago, and um, marketers definitely have this mindset sometimes of like, I know that my product is worth five times more than you paid for it. And, then, and it might be, but, if you, but the product creation needs to be done in a way where you know that people are going to use it because in the end, if people don't go and use it, all they remember is they paid a certain amount of money and they didn't get the result. And whether that's on them or not, they just remember, oh yeah, they didn't really have any, end up working. And so they just have a, a bit of a weird negative feeling when it could have been so positive. So yeah. There's, a, yeah, there's a big thing about that. I know that um, when I invested in um, a office for the first time, oh, not for the first time, but it was the first time I made a significant purchase of, of an office up in London in Covent Garden. And um, it was probably at the time more than I could afford mentally. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I don't like the idea of paying this money, much money out. But it was like, it was a good move in the end because um, I was working with one-to-one -one clients and having a Covent Garden dress and a really nice office really helped out. But the, uh, the day I tried to move in was the day, like a weekend and the person that was meant to be there wasn't there to let me in and they were running late. And the person downstairs in the security wouldn't even let me um, go up the lift or anything. Um, I was like, oh, come on, I've got all my stuff here. I'm moving in today. You can even see it on the paperwork. And they wouldn't let me go in. They wouldn't let, like, let me even put my stuff in the right place. Um, and I was getting really annoyed by it. I was like, oh my God, I've just literally just bought this office and paying rent on it. The money's already gone out of my account and I'm get, already getting a bad service sort of thing. And it, I completely got reframed very quickly because then, because what I realized is the um, the security that was there was so tight. That's exactly what I wanted. Do you know what I mean? I was like, actually, that's why I probably invested this money in this office because I know that we're never going to have a break in or never have a problem because the security is so damn good. And in a way, it kind of reframed my mind very quickly to be like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And it's that experience that you have could have been really negative. I actually looked at it as very positive in the end of it. Um, no, that's good. Cool. So take us through um, the final uh, moment of truth. Yeah, so the final moment of truth is the, um, the moment of influence. And this is the point where someone's got all the way through, they've bought your product, they've consumed it, they've thought about whether they like it or not, they've reflected on that. And at this point is the point where it's what's set a next action? What are they going to do next? Um, and the chances are they're going to um, talk about your product either positively or negatively, unless they haven't consumed it, of course. Um, so if they've um, used it and they really like it, they're going to be proud of that decision they've made and they want to tell other people about it, especially if it's like really exclusive and like it's something they've done. You see lots of people like go and see these like, um, you know, in, in New York, you get these like burgers that cost $200 to buy a burger, for example. Yeah. And people go there because they love trying it out. They probably know it doesn't, it's not, not kind of like a, a normal purchase they would normally make and it's probably not, it doesn't taste like 200 bucks, but it gives you the opportunity to take a photo and put it on Instagram and social media and all that sort of stuff to be like, oh, look what I'm up to. But people love to share the positivity in their lives. And um, if they've just bought something significant, they like to kind of signify like, hey, look, what I've just done, isn't it amazing? Look, everybody. Um, and it's got that kind of viral aspect of it. So by going through that route, um, it could be done in reviews. So people could leave an Amazon review, could leave a testimonial for you, uh, could be word of mouth, uh, or I hate that saying, but word of mouth and word of mouth. So like people like clicking around and telling people about it online as well. Um, but it's that idea that those people are going to become advocates for your business afterwards. And um, it's just, you can facilitate all, all five of these moments you can facilitate. But this one I think is, is really under, underused in terms of like just asking for a testimony or asking for someone to kind of leave a positive review. Um, I know that we're doing it for the podcast and we've got some amazing reviews already, yeah. which is amazing. But um, 
it's that thing of like, right, at that moment where someone's consumed it, is thinking positively, if anyone asks them a question, what are they going to say? What are they going to say on social media? How are they going to come across? Because uh, that can actually spark off a new um, moment of stimulus for other people. Because it's like they're going to probably tell people that are like them. And they say, yeah. oh my God, you've got to check out this. And all of a sudden it comes full circle. Right. Yeah. So so really just, just, just for some context and, and just talking about, uh, talking about that, um, where would that kind of lie from a, a YouTube ad advertising perspective? Where could we best use that in a business as an example? So one way that um, I've seen it work really well is with charities. So um, I've seen, um, I said charities, I've seen one charity do it successfully. Um, what they did is they, they must have done it through remarketing. So when you donated to a particular page on their, on their site, on the thank you page, they would have like, said, right, thank you very much for a donation and put a pixel on that page. And it was a yearly event, this thing. 600 and, oh, sorry, 600, 340 days, let's say, into the following year, they would run ads to say, thank you so much for what you did last year in your donation. Here's what we've um, managed to do with the money you donated. This is what we've done here. And we just want to say thank you. And that's almost like a, a moment of stimulus again really to say hey look look at what you look what you managed to do last year how good is this sort of thing so you're like yeah that was i helped that that was really cool and lo and behold <laughs> five days before the event begins they could really hint that hard with the ads to be like hey would you mind coming and donating and of course if you've been um if you're what you talked about earlier if your decision to um uh, become be charitable the year before is then validated with the fact that you can see what you've achieved uh, what you've done what impact you've had on the world the chances of you then saying yes again to um to investing is so much more likely and probably bigger this time as well yeah sure. um, so that's kind of like a really clever way of doing this i think that um also just just asking for a testimonial since so many people don't do it yeah. um, anytime that you kind of get a really nice review from someone write it down and say hey look send it back to them after say, you say this or paraphrase this basically are you happy for me to stick something like that on my website and again, it's just that positive review that's there. And just making it like clear that you're doing great work and people love your products and people love your kind of like, it's just a useful thing to do. And so the more you can facilitate all of these different things, the better. Because the great thing is, is if you just like identify one a day and just think, right, we're just going to a small little tweak here or a small little tweak there, just to, just like a small little thing, you'll find it really compounds very quickly because you'll just see little areas that you can improve. And the great thing is with all of that, it'll start to increase the value of each customer that, you, that you've got, increase the value of each lead, increase the value of each visitor that comes to your website. And if you know um, that you're able to spend money to make money and you know that like you have got a situation where you put one pound in or one dollar in, you get two dollars back, you know that you can get that to two dollars fifty, all of a sudden you're willing to pay a bit more than one dollar and it's more than the competition. And so you end up making more profit per Per, um, per visitor, which means that you can extend your reach a little bit more, where it is a little bit more expensive, but if you can still turn those areas into profit, you've got a funnel that is so much easier to promote. And whilst everyone's raving about, oh my God, I get $1 leads from this and all that sort of stuff, you're like, well, how much money did you actually make? And did it work out well for you or not? Because I know some of my clients are paying very, very high cost per leads in some scenarios because it's a very ex kind of like expensive marketplace to be in, but they make 10 times that off the back of it. And so, it's just being aware of like how you can look at these five moments, think about what specifically you can do um, as like, just like, Oh my God, we have, we could do that. Just write that, write that, down, write that down, sorry, as an action point and say, right, let's make sure we do that. You might not see the instant win of it straight away, but I imagine like over a year, if you've done seven or eight of those things and you really executed and got really good tweaks that are done on the business, just to focus on these five areas, you just do so much better in terms of um, making the value of each customer and go up uh, big time. No, that's awesome. Um, thanks so much for laying out the, the, the framework and, and just kind of the, an overview of the methodology because I think it's quite thought provoking, um, as you just mentioned, just really considering each one of those different moments and um, just to some degree um, that, you know, putting it into context of how that could apply to your business, I think is quite, it's quite clear to me, um, and I think that our viewers would have uh, listeners, viewers and listeners, both video and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, both. Both, um, would have got a lot of value from this. So um, look, uh, look forward to uh, our next uh, episode, and um, I uh, will look forward to speaking to you then. Nice one. See you in a bit, Ollie. Cheers, Tom. Thanks. 